Welcome to Breakfast with Spaniels with Dr. Judy Morgan. <laughs> Remember, you can purchase all of Dr. Morgan's products at her website at www.drjudymorgan.com. Now it's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Good morning. I think I saw... Uh, <laughs> Hugh's not paying attention. Dorothy Schilling, hi. I got a report that you have another dog that you adopted with lymphoma. Good for you. But I got the report and I was kind of like, wait, she has another dog? How did I not know she had another dog? So thanks for adopting the little one. Um, okay. Um, I thought I would talk about wobblers quickly this morning. Uh, it's something that is fairly common in some breeds of horses, but also in Dobermans and Great Danes. And... Uh, it's a, it's also called cervical vertebral malformation syndrome. So basically the vertebrae in the neck are uh, misshapen a little bit. And instead of all lining up one after another going straight down, they're lined up tipping up into the spinal cord. And so they put pressure on the spinal cord where it goes above and it can cause um, front end lameness, hind end lameness, uh, ataxia which makes them walk like a drunk hence the name wobblers because they kind of don't know where they are um you got your ear in your mouth buddy in uh, great danes it's usually further up the neck like in the second and third maybe the fourth cervical vertebrae and we see it in those dogs generally at a younger age uh, anywhere from like one to four um Whereas the Dobermans, it tends to be the lower neck, uh, kind of like five, six, C five, six, seven, um, and uh, theirs typically shows up a little bit later in life. So four to eight years of age is generally when it'll show up. And so I've been seeing quite a few Dobermans with the problem, and then yesterday I saw a young Dane with the problem. And so, you know, things you can do if you think that your dog may be suffering with something like this, take the back feet and normally when they're standing on their feet like this, flip it over to the top and they should immediately flip it back to the correct side. This dog yesterday, I flipped his left leg and he just stood there. I mean, he literally bare weight standing on the top of his foot. On the right side, he was pretty quick to bring it back. He definitely had more left-sided disease than right side. Generally, it's pretty even. Um, this guy had some other weird things going on. He plasia, which is where the brain stem or the cerebellum uh, is not completely formed. And that's the part of the brain that controls uh, motor coordination. And so in kittens, it's fairly common if the mama cat is exposed to a virus during pregnancy, then that part of the brain does not develop completely. And so they're... Um, they're basically little kitten clowns. They fall over and, you know, they, they do weird things. And um, it was interesting because when I brought that up, this uh, couple who had the Dane, they said, yeah, we've got two kittens with that. <laughs> so, Or cats, I guess, at this point. So they knew exactly what I was talking about. And they said, yeah, we kind of wondered if that could be uh, an issue for this dog as well. The dog was a rescue that was brought up from the south. Um when it was, I don't know, six, seven months old. 
So we don't know the history. We don't know if the mama dog might have been sick during pregnancy, might have been exposed to something. So um, really interesting case. I'm a little concerned he may have a little hydrocephalus or something going on too. He's just got a lot of wonky symptoms. Really sweet, nice dog. Um, just falls over a lot. He, he plays and he's happy, but um, he falls over a lot. So you know, besides these dogs not knowing where their feet are, some of them can be extremely painful. And our last Doberman, Blink, was it Blink? Blink, suffered with Wobbler Syndrome. And he was pretty good. It didn't affect him that much until uh, when Hugh and I got together and, and Hugh moved in, he brought his big uh, giant Masso, which is a Cane Corso Mastiff cross. And... Um, Harley was big and goofy and about 150 pounds, and Blink went about 100 pounds, and the two of them were playing really, really, really rough, and they were just, like, they were getting a little too rough for what I was comfortable with, and we were standing in our little tiny kitchen at the time, and so I grabbed Blink by the collar and pulled him back, and that was a fatal mistake uh, for, near fatal mistake for, for a dog with wobblers, so you never want to pull on these guys on their necks they need to have harnesses um so when i did that it put pressure and you know caused the vertebrae to shift just enough that uh, by the next day blink wasn't using his back end very well and by the day after that he was down on all four we were able to get him back up with acupuncture and laser and herbs and some drugs uh it took about a week um <clears throat> but we didn't make that mistake again with him so um they are kind of treatable but it is a progressive disease and uh, eventually the dogs will go go down completely and that's usually when they get put down when they can't control anything anymore so uh, a lot of them are treated with steroids when they're having a, an acute flare uh, we like to manage them with herbs and acupuncture and laser as much as possible so okay guys um jude just pooped out a huge rock <laughs> well that's good better out than in when it comes to big rocks okay honey if you can uh, give us some music i've uh, got a busy day at work as usual and uh, uh all of you probably recognize the name tammy howard she's a top fan she's usually on here uh she had a family member die in a car accident last night so if we could keep her in our thoughts please Sure, our dogs can eat rice cakes. Recommendation for peeling paws, the kin and kind nose and paw stick. It's on my website. Patty, it's not really a, a um, cavalier problem. <laughs> 